So in January, it's it's really a moment to reflect um, back to business basics. And uh, I spent some time coaching with different agents in different markets and did a lot of co- conversing about geo farming and how to build the geo farm and how to put that into your business. This is a perfect moment for us where most of us are a little slower to, to really sit down with yourself and say, how do I do that? So we have some really great tools. I wanted to make sure you knew about those. I wanted to talk a little bit about the structure of geo farming. So normally we su- it's suggested that you geo farm your neighborhood around your own house because you are well-versed with that neighborhood. You may also be in a market where you'd like to geo farm a specific condo complex or a specific subdivision. Um, So you want to identify the area that you want to geo farm. You want to get extremely well versed with that area. And I mean, down to the nitty gritty, not just, okay, this is my neighborhood or this is my subdivision, but what does it look like? What kind of homes are there? What homes are selling or have sold in that cul-de-sac or in that subdivision? What's the next, what houses are on the market? Very, very important part that you become the expert on what that area is actually doing from a performance measurement perspective. Because when you start to do geo farming, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be sending out a postcard to those clients in that neighborhood specifically. Again, you're gonna create a list. If you want that list to be very specific, you will go to your county website. You will actually look up and find out the actual plat of that neighborhood. You'll be able to click on the plat map and you'll be able to get the specific owner and the specific address, the owner and the the address. Sometimes that'll be a second homeowner. You'll be able to get that information, create an Excel spreadsheet of those customers, And from there, you'll be able to start sending those clients postcards on a consistent basis together with your prospecting and your geo farming um, program. So first and foremost, it's making that list of 100 or 150 people that you want to talk to um, and sending out postcards. We have a great tab. If you go to the job form on CBIQ, you can customize your actual postcards. You can put the photographs in, you can put the amount of postcards that you need, you can customize it, you can do them at a certain time frame. you can pay as you go. So super great tool for you to be able to set up a timeline. So geo farming is normally set up on a timeline that has anywhere from six to 18 months, depending on how long you want to do it to get resolved. The first three months, you should send out two postcards. Months um, three through six, it should be one. And then you can start the cycle again for the next six months. So the idea is that your client in that area is getting a postcard from you consistently with different topics. Again, you can customize the postcards. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can ask Carrie's group to support you with that. Um, But being able to send out a card that basically talks about what your objective is. The second overlaying piece is now you have this great uh, CRM of information on these 100 clients. So you want to start a calling campaign and the calling campaign should line up with your card delivery, right? So if your card delivered on this day, you want to turn around in the next seven days, you want to call the clients and say, hey, I sent you my postcard. Um, I asked if you wanted to have a market report. I'd really love to send you a current market report. You could literally do a market report just on those 100 homes. Um, You can be very, very specific with your communication. So knowing what to communicate to those 100 clients that you're farming is really important. You could talk about... um, Anything that's happening in the HOA there, if you had a connection because you do live in the neighborhood, things that are coming up for that community, you want to become the expert in your small community. And eventually what's going to happen is people are going to recognize that you're the agent of choice. You're the agent with the advice and the experience and the knowledge about the area because you're paying attention to what's selling. You're letting people know that things have sold. You're letting people know what the price increase was on that property that sold because you can do that through the through the actual um, company website or the, the county website. So you're going to become the expert on this small area. The other part of it is to knock on doors, right? Go down through the neighborhood, knock on doors as part of your campaign to flow. You may be doing that in the second set of postcards. Get to know your neighbors, get to know the people that live there. We actually just talked about an agent in in a ski resort market that did door knocking and got results. So 
It's really about consistency. It's about having a plan. It's about laying out how you want that to work. The third thing is within a geo farm campaign is Popeyes. So throughout the year, are you able to come up with small little gifts that you deliver to those clients, right? With a message from you, whatever that seasonality may be. A lot of people will do that around holidays um, and special times of the year. But a small little drop-off gift is always something that makes people go, wow, you're being a little bit more personal about how you're connecting with me. Again, you're focused on those 100 people in your geo farm that are consistently getting postcards and the special touches from you. So you have a, a marketing report you can deliver, you have specific knowledge about that area, but you should become the expert for that area. So if you have any questions about how you do that or any wanting any support, you are more than welcome to connect with myself directly or any of your managing directors. Because geo farming is truly one of the base products of what makes real estate move forward. And at the moment, I am sure that you are looking for as many listings as you can possibly get. I know it's been a difficult month for that to happen. So you should be doing the basics that are attached to your business. Stick to your daily goals, stick to your basic phone calls, implement a geo farm, work on circle prospecting, knock on doors, communicate with your clients and educate yourself about the market and little specific area that you have chosen to geofarm. So if we can be of any help, please let us know. At the moment, I feel that's one of the most important things that a real estate agent can do in the month of January.